Let's talk about collagen synthesis because you had mentioned that. I brought it up as well. At least in one 2017 study, athletes who took, correct me if I'm getting this wrong, roughly 15 grams of gelatin plus somewhere around 200 to 250 milligrams of vitamin C one hour before doing brief exercise. We can talk about what that brief exercise is, but had double the markers of new collagen formation in their blood compared to control. Now, I've heard you talk about elsewhere some of the nuances and complexities of these markers and how you might find that one goes up and one goes down from the intervention. So how do you evaluate that? But based on everything you have learned, researched, experimented with, reviewed, what would your current recommendations be, if any, for collagen slash gelatin consumption, and not all products are created equal. There's a lot of garbage out there, but what might the parameters or criteria be? So the first thing is to address the last issue, because what you're looking for in any collagen supplementation is that the source of the collagen is from a skin source, from pelts Mm. of the animal. So fish skin, bovine skin, The reason that we say a skin source, because a lot of people use bone broth and bone broth is a great source of collagen. The problem is that most mammals, we store our heavy metals, we sequester the heavy metals in our bones. So when you do bone broth, you're also getting some heavy metal. Mm. So you just keep that as a background thing so that if you get it from the skin, there's not going to be any of the heavy metal. So that's the Mm -hmm. only thing that we would say about a collagen supplement. Okay. You know, I accidentally got the right thing. I was like, I was looking at the back of this. I'm not going to give them a free product placement because I don't actually know what the quality is here, but this is a hydrolyzed grass fed type one and three collagen peptide powder. But on the back, I was like, wow, will it even indicate? And it does say ingredient bovine hide collagen peptide hydrolysate. Yeah. If I'm saying that correctly. You're saying it perfectly. And so that's the only thing that we really are concerned with because you can say, oh, this is a type one, type three doesn't really matter because we're not (laughs) absorbing the collagen as a whole molecule and just sticking it into our tendon. We're breaking it down to its building blocks. We're breaking it down to the amino acids. And the thing about collagen is it has tons of glycine in it and lots of proline. Mm -hmm. And so when we take just milk protein, like whey protein, if we take that after a heavy lift, our glycine levels actually dip in the period after, after eating. it, And so that's work that Luke Van Loon has done where he shows that there's a drop in glycine, probably because we're synthesizing more connective tissue protein than we have glycine. So all we're trying to do with the hydrolyzed collagen is we're trying to go in and we're trying to give building blocks. So it doesn't Mm -hmm. matter if it started from type one, type three, you want it from the skin. And that's going to be mostly type one and type three, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they've done a super high secret peptide isolation because the peptides don't seem to play a big role Mm -hmm. because we've had some companies come to us and say, oh, well, you're going to have to use a lower dose of ours because we have the special peptide and it never works. And we always go back (laughs) to the other dose. What dosing and timing do you recommend both for the collagen and for the vitamin C? We recommend taking those things together just because the vitamin C is absolutely essential for your body's ability to to synthesize collagen. Most of us have a perfectly normal level of vitamin C. We're not going to get scurvy. We're not going to get any of these things. But what we want to do is if we're going to increase collagen synthesis, we want to also make sure that the cofactor for the enzyme that's going to allow us to make and export that collagen is also present at a high enough amount. So we take them together. So we know for sure from studies that I was involved in when I was on sabbatical with Luke Van Loon in the Netherlands, that if you give a blend of whey protein with five grams of hydrolyzed collagen, you're going to increase muscle connective tissue protein synthesis. And that's the first measure that's shown that, oh, connective tissue protein synthesis is sensitive to the diet. When is that being consumed? That one was consumed afterwards, but that was because it was a study on muscle. Right. The reason that the timing might matter is if I'm trying to target it to a tendon, the tendon doesn't have good blood supply. If I'm trying to target it to cartilage or ligament, it doesn't have good blood supply. And the way that those tissues get their nutrients is by getting either compressed or stretched and the the matrix gets squeezed of the liquid. And then as it relaxes, it's going to bring liquid in from the environment. 
if the environmental liquid has more of the amino acids and the vitamin C that we need to build more collagen, having the collagen base before you do your exercise, that's the ideal situation. Now, it's not always possible. It's still okay to take it afterwards. But if you're really trying to target it to one specific spot, take it before about 30 minutes to an hour before. Mm -hmm. And then those amino acids are going to peak right when you're loading, say, your rotator cuff. Mm -hmm. And now more of what you have eaten is going to be delivered to your rotator cuff. Mm 